Hello! In this video I'm going to give you an advice, I think, or tell you what helped me to reach or finally commit to dropping back into a wheel from standing position. And just a little disclaimer, I don't consider myself to be hypermobile, especially not in the back, but it's true that, for example, I'm in my hips, I think, I am better at forward folding than some people, so there are some joints in my body that are maybe more mobile than for the in the average person, but my upper back is like maximal flat or maybe a little bit bent the other way, um, and back bends were always were always very challenging for me. It was always something that I really liked didn't enjoy at the beginning. I even had a conversation with someone on Instagram um, that asked me how is it possible that I can drop back and I don't have pain in my low back. And this is something new for me. I used to have um, pain in my low back in Ustrasana in the camel pose for since the beginning for many years before I started really to lengthen and try to reach up rather than bend back and in the wheel pose it was the same I used to feel it um, the moment I started to like push myself a little bit more and it still happens in poses like scorpion if I allow my legs to lower lower <laughs> so go lower towards my head and my low back will basically take all the load. And for someone like me, who whose upper back doesn't really allow the chest to open enough, all the weight um, that is like brought to the away from the body, so because we can't really go uh, very very um, arching in a higher kind of way. It's the same as with pressing a handstand. So basically, if you can compress super close towards your body, so your legs don't go further away from you, the less weight you have to bring up. And in dropping back, the more you extend away from your body, so the more weight happens to be hanging there, not towards the ground, but rather horizontally, the more weight your low back will be bearing. And that's why it's much challenging, I think, for us. This is why also I don't have my hands above my head because they are adding additional weight if I keep them there. They don't go down, but they stay horizontal and they're anyway too far away from the ground. So there is no point for me to try to keep them them there because the low back will take all the load. So first, of course, always stay safe. If you feel any kind of pain in these exercises, try to reconsider if you <laughs> should be doing them or change something. The first exercise that helped me a lot to open in uh, the like hanging in standing was actually not from yoga but from Tai Chi and we are going to do it now. I will just show it to you. You can repeat it several times if you like. We used to repeat it like 10 times at least. So you can stand with your feet as wide as you like. Something that feels stable and comfortable for you. And then first we are going into a standing back bend and you can go into it without warming up but always make sure that it doesn't make you feel any kind of pain. I like to keep my chest open, so I try to ch open the chest, maybe even the head, but you can also keep your neck long. There weren't any rules in this, and everyone actually supported the low back by using the hands, pressing into the low uh, or higher hips. So you can use your hands, and then you can also bend your knees. And what you're going to go for here, what you're trying to achieve is to just stay for 10 breaths. You can allow your head to hang and you breathe. And this will 
allow your legs to find stamina, but also it will learn or teach you how to look behind you with your head while you breathe in between. So 10 breaths there. And then in a very controlled way, you come up straightening your legs first and trying to straighten your spine from the bottom to the top. And immediately you can go into a forward fold just to allow your spine to recover. We would even go into a forward fold where we would use the hands to bring yourself a little bit closer. And again, 8 or 10 breaths in your forward fold, whatever it looks like. Teaching your spine to stay and be able to go actually from one to the other. And it also teaches you how to come up from that back bend. And you can start in something that is not your deepest, of course, especially if you're not warmed, warmed up. And then over the time, if you're doing this for many uh, repetitions, you will find yourself to go deeper or maybe even not going as deep if you find out that it was too much. And as more as you more bend your knees, the more you have to use your legs as your body hangs. You can also try to look all the way back. The further you look, the more you have a sense of how far away you are from the ground. With control coming straight. You can also take a little stretch here in between and folding again. And this was one of the practices that uh, challenged me to every time we would go backwards to go more backwards and see where I actually can see <laughs> behind me on the ground. And because it took really long time and a lot of repetitions, it really you really have the time to like consider and think about stuff, think about your legs, think about where you are opening the chest or not and also feel how um, you can stay there for a little bit longer so you have enough time to decide if you want to go lower or not. The second thing that is done very often in some, some teachers teach it a lot, it's leaning back but this time with a body sting really really stable and in one line actually the only thing that bends is the knees. You can even go for already picking up your heels if it feels good. So you support your core, your front ribs, you push them in. You squeeze your glutes so your hips stay open. You can keep your arms beside you. Then you lift your heels and then you send your knees forward as your whole upper body goes backwards. And this again teaches you how to use your legs to bring your weight back and also it's a good core strengthener <laughs> so you strengthen your core which is really important for holding your low back and as you go down you can also stay here for a little bit breathe there learning how to go forward forward or more down and then of course going up is as well important. So many people told me that when they first did the drop back, they weren't able to come back into standing, which for me wasn't really a problem. Uh, I think it's just because I had so many um, exercises done in the past that I already knew how to go back. If you want to go deeper in this pose, you can try how low can you go with your knees? So you can maybe go as low as your blocks. You can put some blocks underneath 
or you can try to go all the way down. Also, it requires some kind of toe flexibility. So your toes needs to be able to bend in this way and then try if you can go also up. I think I'm not possible, I'm not able to do it, but from certain height, it's possible for me. So now I know, or you know, how much you can go up, how much your knees can be bent in order to go up. And from there you can build up. So you can pick up your heels, and you can twist towards the right side, and already using your right hand, looking where your right hand is reaching, you bend your knees. And you try to go low, maybe, eventually, finding the ground. And then you try to go up, maybe in a different way, maybe just going onto your knees and then standing. Always use your breath, changing the sides, knees go forward, and you're leaning backwards. Look where your hand is in order to find the ground. Maybe you drop a few centimeters. Actually, you can then put your whole palm down, and if you have a good wheel, you can try to go all the way into your wheel. This is the first wheel I'm doing today. <laughs> and it feels quite okay. Mostly in the upper back. And then going back the other way, maybe. Maybe just onto your knees. If this is too much for you to drop onto your knees, another option is also to start already from your knees. You can tuck your toes and then twist. And you try to lean back, find the ground, maybe picking the knees up afterwards, maybe flipping into your wheel. You have to slide the left fingers in this case so they can open after some time and then going the other way. Rearranging your feet back and forward as much as is possible or as much as is needed for your body to work. Since non, not everyone will have really tight wheel where their hands and feet will be really close. And already after these exercises, you will feel how much you actually need the strength from your legs, coming from your thighs especially. Don't forget also to keep squeezing your thighs together using your inner thighs to help you to support your pelvis and also squeezing your glutes to keep your hips open and also allow you to open from your hips into a small backbend already. So you want to avoid the backbend happening too much in your low back, but your hips are helping, so your glutes are squeezing, your chest are opening. And to open your chest, if your will is not there yet, which might happen, can happen, I love anything that is hollow back. So going for a puppy pose on the ground is the, be is the best start, I guess, I think. So your hips stay over your knees. You reach your hands forward, you find a lot of length, and then you can start dropping the chest towards the ground, even looking forward if it feels comfortable for your neck. And staying again here for a few breaths, trying to elongate every time you inhale and trying to bring the chest closer towards the ground every time you exhale. For this one, you might feel it a lot in your shoulders. And the shoulders, they will give, they will open after a time. I don't think my shoulders are extremely open, but they definitely did a lot of, I think even more than my upper back in opening, um, then maybe even hips. But um, yeah, it's basically opening shoulders, chest and your hips. For opening the hips, great pose is just a classic low lunge with your glutes firing to open your the front hips actually helping those front hip muscles, hip flexors 
to release and then also keeping your core in so not just dumping it in your low back but rather trying to stay strong in the low back maybe arms up maybe even side bends even twists are great from there they help especially twists away from your front thigh to open your hips another pose like puppy pose but actually it's the same one can be used with wall so you have to find a flat surface the wall is ideal because you don't you can push against it and it's the same deal you lengthen through your shoulders to your chest and then you try to bring the chest closer feeling the muscles on your upper back to engage your belly to squeezing to not let go of the low back maybe bringing the chin onto the wall again spending some time there we can do the same thing in varsity day but i have some classes here that have a hollow back inversion included again you can use the wall in that way you can use the body weight to press you down the last exercise is of course going into your drop back standing away from the wall or using the wall and this one i actually didn't believe that will do anything i didn't believe that this is going to teach me how to drop back but i realized it's doing it or i realized that i am ready maybe to drop back by myself when it became really easy and accessible for me to use the wall. Wall can also help you to allow your shoulders to open a little bit more, your upper back to open a little bit more if you dip into a hollow back so you bend your hips forward to release the pressure on your low back and you can focus more on your upper body your shoulders so you start approximately like soft arm soft bend in your elbow away from the wall your legs can go a little bit wider than your hips or as wide as your hips try to keep super super a lot of support and strength growing through them through your glutes through your quadriceps pulling through your inner thighs you can reach up in this case trying to elongate again you can open your chest already and you can start sending your hips backwards and then you should feel the back bend happening from your upper back, your shoulders. You drop your gaze back just so you can see where you're going. It's our main sense that we use is sight. So you need to be able to look where you're going and that will allow you not to fear something. So you look, you reach, and you try to send your hips back, your chest up, you find the wall, maybe lean a little bit into it. Then either use your fingertips or you can place the palms, if your wrists allow it, onto the wall. And then you try to press against it while keeping the hips still sitting back. And then you try to elongate your elbows. This was step one. Every time, it, it, if it feels overwhelming, if it feels like it's too much, try to very slowly reverse how you came into it and come back. I'll just go again, finding the wall, maybe lean, then you'll try to press, although my elbows don't extend all the way. This is uh, the uh, attempt, so I'm trying to do it. Then you can bend your knees a little bit. And then maybe even sending your hips forward in order to step your palms down or lower. And this way you will go all the way down towards the ground. You can always step your feet a little bit more forward, which I have already started to do a little bit because I realized I'm too close to the wall, which might happen, especially if you're not that flexible in your upper back. So I'll just demonstrate um, maybe without talking too much. <laughs> so you press, you step your feet a little bit forward, you send your hips down so you can walk again. You can sit your hips back, bending the knees, you try to open and you go lower, lower, lower. 
you try to use minimal weight on your hands until you reach the ground. If this was super hard, you can just drop from here and not go up if you feel like you don't have enough strength. Or you can try to go up again using your hands a little bit, but mostly your legs reverting. <sighs> Trying to find a little bit of angulation at the end to lengthen the low back. And then you can take, of course, a little break. Maybe not going into a forward fold right away so you don't hurt anything, especially if you felt a lot of compression on your low back happening. And if this becomes easy, maybe you can even do it while talking, which apparently today I was not really good at. That means that you might be ready. And the more you do of those drop backs with twist, the less it will be feeling like it's super hard or challenging, or maybe even you're extremely afraid of it. For me, I realized that it's, it can't be that hard because I did those twisted drawbacks many times. So I knew my legs will support me. Um, the only thing I had to add were the arms and more opening into the chest. Opening in the chest again, any kind of positions, any kind of backbend should happen in from the chest. You can always use your legs a little bit wider and that will help you to be closer towards the ground since it's just like a triangle, like geometry, where you know that your legs, uh, if they are right underneath the hips, this is going to be the furthest away from the ground. If you bring your legs a little bit wider, you will be just a tiny amount lower, so that might help you. Try not to turn your feet too much out, but that must happen if your ankles are not as flexible. So the more you lean your knees forward, the more your ankles will take from um, the bend or they need to bend too much. So that's why many people need to open their ankles. This also uh, creates external rotation, which also makes your hips to open more. If you externally rotate the leg a little bit, then you will be able to go further back with it so that helps, but we want to keep like uh, engagement from the inner thighs at the same time to support that pelvis to not totally collapse in the pelvis. So we want to first use mostly the muscles to support the hips, the low back, opening the chest, and of course the neck. So keeping the chin uh, as much at the neck, learning how to look back is also extremely important. So squeezing from your legs, from your glutes, from your inner thighs and then first lengthening and in your palms I prefer to bring them onto my chest. I had like a bad experience with my arms beside me. So now staying at the chest so you know uh, where to press with your chest and then looking back. And then the moment you start to feel it in your roll back and starts to hurt, maybe reverse and don't go there. So I try to even bring my hips back a little bit at the beginning and only after a while I will go more into a back bend from my low back, see if shifting the hips forward rather than back. And even trying this several times, learning how you feel in it, if you get dizzy or if there is too much pressure again in the low spine, just determining how far can you go before you're fully committed to bring the arms over the head because they will bring a lot of weight as I said before if your shoulders are not as open and I even do one hand and then the second since this is how I was uh, doing it in those twisting dropbacks uh, and that was easier so one arm is going to be less heavy than two and coming back you're trying just to reverse everything that you do, did. You're trying to bring all the weight onto your legs first before you use them to go in control up. I know some people will freak out when coming up because they will lose the idea of where they are. So going very slowly um, and 
looking where you're going helps. But the moment you lift your head, your chin, uh, that moment will bring the back bend out from your upper back because neck is part of the spine. It will bend forward and that may, might cause even more compression for your low back. So you don't want to hurt yourself and maybe try to learn how to come up with the head still hanging behind you. If you want to do, be sure that you don't like suddenly crunch your low back in one specific place and hurt it. I hope this video helped you in a way. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions of what helped you, of uh, what drills you are doing, or if you didn't understand anything or something. <laughs> Let me know. I definitely read all the comments every time. Although I might not respond, but if you're really having a question, I definitely will respond. So. Have a nice uh, day and see you in the next video.